Hi guys, really, really quick video. Um, this is the RGX220 that I finally finished building. Um, basically, it took me longer than I expected um, as I had an ESC failure on the Wraith um, Mini 25 amp PSCs, which meant that I had to um, change my plan and move to a 4-in-1 ESC um, and basically increase the stack um, to 15 mil as opposed to the um, 10 mil I originally planned. Anyway, I've just been out and uh, test flown this today. Um, really awful day to do it um, as the wind was kind of hitting 30, 35 mile an hour gusts. So I was getting blown all over the shop. It handled the wind pretty well. Um, there was very little prop wash whatsoever. However, um, the curse of Joshua Bardwell struck, struck again. Um, this this is the second Kakute F4 that I've got. Um, if you watch my earlier videos, you'll see that I was getting um, basically death rolls um, on another quad, um, basically this one, um, which I solved by removing the foam soft mount and basically just using 3M foam tape to stick the um, gyro to the flight controller. Um, anyway, this has got another Kakuti in. I did exactly the same. Whether a little bit of vibration or something got through because of the low stack, I don't know. But again, um, I hit the, hit the issue with a death spiral. Um, the quad had a huge crash from, I don't know, 100 feet up, um, straight into hard sand. And as you can see, it basically broke the top plate which is the the port that um that basically sandwiches the two the arm together the top and the bottom plates um so you can see it's broken there if we turn it upside down um it's going on the other side uh, this side is also cracked in the same place there um Sorry, you can't see. Um, the back part looks okay. Um, so basically what we've got here is a design flaw. Um, the arms themselves are, seem super, super strong. No issues there despite a lot of crashes. Um, but these um, pieces which come out, these two millimeter pieces which extend from the top plate um, are just too weak. Um, and when you've got you know, five mil carbon plus another five, another five mil, another five mil. You got fifteen mil of carbon there. Um, when that, when this arm takes a lot of force, um, it just snaps this um, this top plate here. So, pretty upset by this actually. I mean, frames break. I'm not a particular breaker of frames actually. Um, I very rarely break a frame, um, but I'm good in this case because I really like this um, this particular frame. It was cheap as chips. It had a number of design things um, that I liked. Um, when I built it, I raised the back arms up slightly by five mil compared to the front arms. And when I was flying it, I was getting I was really struggling to find any prop wash, um, which is probably due to the slightly higher rear arm so there's a lot to be said about this and i think it's a really really good looking quad but sadly after a hard crash game over so yeah so if you've got one one of these on the way um i don't really know what to say to be honest with you it might just have been because it was one hell of a crash um but either way it that's clearly um a design flaw it's a shame really if there's a bit more meat like there is on the back one then would probably be absolutely fine. Um, the bit that I was worried about was this um, front pod. Um, and I actually put an extra standoff um, in there just to hold it firmly to the top and bottom plate, but that took all the impacts without any issue whatsoever. Um, it's just, just this point that failed. So there you go, you live and learn. Um, you know, it was a cheap, really cheap frame, so. I'm not particularly bothered. I'm more bothered that I really liked this quad and as I said, even flying in ridiculously gusty conditions, which I shouldn't have been flying in. Um, it, I could tell that it was a really, really, really um, good flying quad. So anyway, cheers guys. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.